Hi, welcome back to Pet Talk. And here's a question for you. How would you like to make a difference? Help someone live a richer life and do that through your love of animals. Well, you know what you can. <laughs> yes, how about becoming a puppy raiser for Guiding Eyes of the Blind? Welcome Maria from Guiding Eyes for the Blind with a great Guiding Eyes little puppy biscuit in her lap. Maria is the regional manager for the Southern Connecticut Puppy Raising Region and she is here with Maureen who is a volunteer puppy raiser from East Haddam and is currently raising her fourth little puppy, Chris. But here today she is with a fellow volunteer's pup. Emma Lou is 15 months old, learning to be a guide dog. Uh, Maureen has also raised Kendall, who is now an active guide dog, who you can see right here with graduate David Grimes, as well as Indy, who is now in formal training. How absolutely fantastic. And please say hello again to our wonderful co-hosts, Amy. Bert and Star, who are speaking up a storm here, but so happy to have you back with us. Um, Maureen, I'm going to start with you. Um, it's such a great program, um, and you have been involved with four different puppies. It must be incredibly um, exciting, but also difficult when you have to say goodbye to the puppy. I think that's the first thing people think about. How do you give it, it up? It's actually the most common question I get. Um, I have children, and I think about it in terms of sending a child to college that you are preparing for that from day one. So you always have that in the back of your mind. That the dog is gonna go to college, or somewhat of a college, when they go in for training. And since you're raising them for that purpose, it really never enters my mind that it would be very disappointing if they didn't go. Mm -hmm. So, and it's really exciting when you do see the graduates with their dogs. So uh -huh. that really helps a lot. To, um, I, I, I have seen, yeah. I have been at a graduation and it is unbelievable and that feeling that you get for having to make a difference must be like yes. worth it, yes, it's well really worth, worth it. it. Um, and an exciting experience. And, and that's what we're looking for here today, folks. We want to get some of you uh, to hopefully do what Maureen does. And uh, Maria, I want you to explain to folks what a difference this does make in somebody's lives, how important it is. Sure. Um, a lot of our clients who come to us, we service clients, blind clients from all over the United States and even all over the world. And it's amazing to see the independence and the dignity that one of these dogs can provide for someone who isn't sighted. It's, it's, they not only get a best friend, but they get a, a, that independence and in being able to move around, get from one place to another without having to depend on a family member or a friend. It's, it's really it's so great for them. <laughs> and somebody, I have something to say about that. Um, now, you've provided us uh, with some tips here on what you are looking for uh, in a foster parent. I would call it a foster parent. Some of the things, uh, the responsibilities that they might expect. Make sure that the puppy is a part of your family, uh, mm -hmm. so the puppy will live in your home. You want to make sure that the puppy uh, learns house manners, mm -hmm. and I guess getting into adolescence is uh, very important. Um, you also want to make sure that the uh, dog is socialized, and that I'm sure would mean all different types of experiences, just mm -hmm. like going to the store, um, taking a walk, uh, meeting other dogs and people, which is something they'll have to do their whole lives. Uh, build up a connection. Uh, you want to teach the puppy that when he's with people, it's a good thing, because mm -hmm. I guess all this will help. And also, uh, you would attend regular yeah. classes. It, yes, it's a time commitment, but it works well with any size of family. So any so. size, and, and so it's you've been able to do all of this and then again raise four successful dogs. Yes, I'm lucky. Yeah. So what would you say to people out there who are listening thinking, oh, I'm not sure, but it sounds like fun and it is fun. I can tell them it's fun. Um, and and it's really excellent for a family because that we all get involved. And I think it really gives the kids a sense of being able to do something um, bigger for their community, something better. Is it expensive? I think a lot of folks might be thinking that, especially during these times. It's actually not expensive because Guiding Eyes covers a lot of the costs. Um, we will pay for vet care, so all the puppies' vaccines and uh, yearly checkups are covered by Guiding Eyes. We'll also provide a crate. Um, sometimes we provide leashes. That depends on the region. In southern Connecticut, we do. Um, most of our puppies go out to raisers um, at about eight weeks of age. Okay. Um, and then they're in that home until they're about 18 months old. And that's when they return to our training school for formal harness training. So we're looking for puppy raisers out there. <laughs> I don't know if Bert's excited, but hopefully well, actually, out there. Well, actually, I think Bert likes him. He might yeah. like the idea. He likes He's looking, dogs. that's right. He likes to play with Emmy Lou. He wants to do. <laughs> do. Well, thank you, ladies, for being here. Thank and you again, for having us. Um, thank I hope you. Uh, people out there will uh, definitely consider this wonderful, uh, wonderful so idea. Too. We'll be right back.